Yo, what's going on guys? Ian77 here. In today's video, we're going to be playing one of the best mortar decks inside of Clash Royale. Alright, so hopping into the first match here, I'm going to be actually using the version with Mega Minion in this first match. I I think it's also very good with Spear Goblins, like I showed in the intro of this video, but I feel like it's kind of just up to your personal preference which one you run. Uh, I think I do like the Spear Goblins version a little bit better, so I probably will run it the, the rest of the games after this, but... Um, there are two options for you guys, like you can either run Mega Minion or Spear Goblins, kind of depending on what you, or what your play style is, I feel like. Alright, so we're just going to go with a Mortar here, not really sure what this guy is playing, but we do have Tornado in this deck as well, so we can be a little bit more aggressive with the Mortar, like even if he has like a, a Hog Rider or something, you can always pull it away with a Tornado instead of um, not really having any other responses to it, like some other Mortar decks. And he's going to have Balloon here, and... Uh, just gonna tornado it to the king tower. Probably could have tornadoed it away if I wanted to, but I wasn't really sure if he would freeze or not, so um, wasn't really worth it to take the risk. And this should be an interesting matchup. I think Mega Minion will be quite nice in this matchup over like the Speed Goblins, just that we can have a bit of extra air defense, um, at least like an extra strong air defensive card. So this should be pretty interesting here. The only problem is that with Mega Minion, you do, you do have a bit of a slower cycle, so it's not quite as good against. A lot of those cycle decks especially um, and by the way guys i haven't like uploaded too much recently I feel kind of odd about it like i know i don't have to upload like every day or every couple days always but i just feel strange to do it so i'm gonna try to get back on the content grind um pretty soon just had a lot of school work and also also crl was quite a lot for me recently i i don't know if you guys saw it but i was playing in crl and I didn't qualify for the next stage, unfortunately, but I did still get top 16, uh, so still got something out of it, so yeah, pretty pretty happy overall with the performance, like it was quite a difficult journey anyways to get through all of the stages and whatnot, so yeah, pretty good by me, and by the way guys, like are, are most of you guys just like very casual players, like do any of you guys actually care about CRL? I think I asked you guys before, we're just gonna gonna ask again just to see where you guys are at because um i'm not sure if most of the players actually care about crl right now like i feel like they're not really advertising very well at all like they have quite bad viewership and honestly like even the even the money that you can win from crl is quite a bit less than last year at least from what we've seen so far so uh not too sure if i'm uh too intrigued by crl but i'm still gonna try my best in it and see see how it goes um Alright, so in this first match here, we're just defending really easily here. Honestly, I did face this deck earlier and I did lose once to it. It's not the easiest matchup because you don't have like a big spell. Uh, well, you do have Earthquake, but you don't have like a, a rocket or like a fireball to kill their like big, big like double dragon bowler pushes. So it's actually not that easy, but I feel like he's not really playing it too well. So kind of wrecking him here. And um, I know you guys always love to see Lumberwing being beaten, so... This is probably how you want to do it here with this deck. It's a pretty good deck against most of these random random mid ladder decks, especially because you have so many responses to everything. Like you have Valkyrie plus Log to kill Royal Hogs, you have Tornado to kill Hog Riders, you have Mortar against Hog Rider, and you have like um like Mortar's really good against the Giant too, and even against like decks like Sparky, this this deck can do pretty well against. So you can do pretty well against everything. You do struggle in a few matchups, but to be honest, like you're gonna do okay in like the majority of matchups so that's a pretty solid deck overall now we're pretty much just eq cycling this guy like we can't really mortar on offense too much we kind of need to save it for defense at least some of the time so i don't really want to be too aggressive with the mortars or anything and uh, i think we can actually cycle back to another eq before he really has the chance to make a big push here and this should be gg here just like another mid ladder game this feels like mid ladder here this guy just like spamming stuff but we were able to control it pretty well with all of our air cards. Alright, hopping in the next match here, we're going to be up against Sergio Ramos. Uh, I think this is the same guy I faced in the last video, so he probably will be playing Mega Knight here, which should be an interesting matchup. And by the way, guys, I did switch back to Spear Goblins, or I actually just switched to Spear Goblins in this match, because I feel like they're uh, quite nice to have, like... I was facing some, like, Expo decks, and even though you have Earthquake in this deck, Expo's actually not that easy, especially when you have Mega Minions, so I feel like it's better to have Spear Goblins, unless you're, 
like in mid ladder and you don't really care anyways like to have a fast cycle against those normal decks because you're not really going to face normal decks anyways when you're in mid ladder so i feel like it might be better to have mega minion for a lot of you but i think spear goblins are probably a bit better for where i am on ladder all right so mega knight should be an interesting match i'm not really sure how it's gonna go but the early king activation should be pretty helpful here for us and he did get a bit of an early damage lead because we had to take the bandit dash in order to get the king activation but uh not too bad to be honest he's gonna pressure a bit right here but defensive mortar is actually really strong like that's the really nice thing about mortar is that it's like really strong on defense and also really strong on offense and uh just a very versatile building i mean to be honest like whenever you play a mortar deck you almost always need like a alternate win condition like either having earthquake cycling like this deck has or like a miner or something but i feel like mortar even though it's not the most reliable win condition i feel like it can always get a few shots on the tower pretty much no matter what they have like even against earthquake decks sometimes mortar can be pretty good because it will just like um like even if they earthquake their mortar like it's still gonna get like three shots on their tower i think so you can always find ways to break through i think we'll get a shot off here probably even two shots if he doesn't like zap it or something so okay he will actually fireball that there so just gonna go with spear goblins here the other nice thing about spear goblins over mega minion is that they are pretty good and cheap pressure at the river like they're not gonna always break through but sometimes they are nice to get like a little bit of chip damage on the opponent's tower and this deck is kind of all about chip damage so i feel like it's quite nice and sometimes you can even use your firecracker like a magic archer on their towers um like while splashing another unit so you do have quite a few ways to get damage with this deck if you play play your cards right and it is kind of nice that this guy's fireball here over like lightning because we don't really have to worry about spacing our units out too much we can kind of just like stack everything and this queen might be a little bit annoying right here but we did make him go with the early ability so i think valkyrie should clean up most of it we probably will have to go with like a couple other things here and Looks like, he, looks like he will go in with the Ram Rider, so just gonna go with the defensive mortar here. Um, gonna log a little bit late there, could have logged probably a second earlier, but Valkyrie also gonna clean up really nicely. And I know some people did run Knight in this deck, but I feel like Valkyrie is just so nice in this meta, like especially to counter Royal Hogs decks, and it's also better against stuff like Mega Knight too, and kind of just like counters like Goblin Drill and like all those random stuff you might face, especially in mid ladder. Alright, so now we're kind of just going to focus on defense right here. Not really being too aggressive with our mortars, because I know we can just go with the queen on it, so not really worth it to go with offensive mortars, and we kind of need it on defense against his ram rider, so just prioritizing defense here. Going to go with the nato, not the best nato there. I was kind of hoping to click the bandit as well, to be honest, but it uh, didn't really matter too much because the bandit connected to our strong side tower, so going to go with spear goblins here. Hoping to get a bit of chip damage, but he will zap it which is honestly fine for me <clears throat> excuse me and I'm gonna go with a mortar here i actually predicted that he would go with like a mega knight or even like something like a queen in the back there so perfect mortar timing and it will get a shot on the tower uh his ram rider may get a bit of damage here but should be pretty fine for us i think because it did it did only get the charge off didn't get any extra damage so yeah looking pretty good here you'll get a fireball off as well and getting a bit of damage here but we're just gonna be earthquake cycling him and i will actually tornado here hoping to like line the mega knight up with the tower and it uh, looks like it will yeah we'll splash the tower so that will be gg right here all right hoping in the next match you're gonna be facing this guy um it is still a little bit early in the season it's not really early season anymore but kind of in between here so not really sure who most of these players are just gonna cycle an eq like this deck is kind of based around eq cycling like a lot of the matchups you won't even get too much mortar damage you're just gonna be defending sometimes and just getting mortar chip and the nice thing about this deck is that you can pretty much defend anything like i feel like some of the harder matchups might be like lava or something like even though you do have um good air defense you don't have like too many counters to the actual lava itself like you do have firecracker but they can kind of just like spell it away and uh, I guess Spear Goblins do help a little bit as well, so um, I feel like you do have a chance in every matchup, but there are some matchups that are a little bit more challenging with this deck, just because you don't have like too much pressure, and I think this guy probably will be running Golem here, which should be an interesting matchup. Um, I'm pretty sure it is Golem, because no other deck really runs Skelly Drags besides like Lava Hound, but I can tell it's not a Lava Hound deck, judging by his spells and by the fact that he has Baby Dragon as well. 
Alright, so yeah, he would go with the Golem in the back here, so sometimes against like these heavy decks like Golem and like Lava, it is better to have Mega Minion as well. That's kind of why I put Mega Minion in the deck in the first place, but um, sometimes you have to make a few compromises that it's just like a better deck overall. And I feel like it's just better overall <clears throat> in this meta with Spear Goblins. Like it's also a lot easier to cycle your cards in this deck when you have Spear Goblins because you don't really get into as awkward cycles as you might get into with a Mega Minion. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to defend this pretty well. Hopefully the Firecracker does splash the Skelly Drags. It looks like it does clean up pretty nicely, so pretty good defense right there. And maybe a little bit difficult to get damage in this matchup, but hopefully we can get like a Mortar off right here. Yeah, and I don't think you'll have enough Elixir to Golem right away, so uh, Mortar will lock on the tower, which is really good for us right here. We kind of have to use our Mortar on offense sometimes because we don't really... I mean, we can't really, like, rely on EQ cycle to finish him off, because if we were to cycle a lot of EQs, he could probably just punish us easily with, like, a big golem push, so kind of have to get those mortars off, and even though we did waste the mortar there, we are going to be able to cycle back to another one, and I'm just going to go with the mortar in that position. I could have went with it, like, one more tile in the other lane, but just wanted to make sure that the golem didn't get, like, pushed by any unit or something, and then just, like, go, go bypass the mortar. Alright, he is actually going to kill our firecracker. Kind of unfortunate that it just barely died right there, but uh, should be okay here, I think. Okay, he will go with Evolve, so might have to get like a last second Valkyrie here. And yeah, it is also nice to have the Spear Goblins so here. Gonna distract the Evolves a little bit more and gonna buy us all the time we needed here, so that will be GG here against Goal. Okay, so hopping in the next match here, we're gonna be up against this guy. Uh, probably just gonna cycle. Um, an Earthquake right here. D could have cycled Skeletons as well, but I feel like Earthquake's actually a pretty safe play on their tower. Um, he will have Royal Hogs, it seems, so... This will be interesting, actually, to see how this deck does against Royal Hogs, because Royal Hogs are one of the best decks in the meta right now, and um, probably won't be easy, because he does have Earthquake for our Mortar, and he does have, like, Queen as well, so it's going to be pretty hard to break through, but we do have Earthquakes that we can always cycle on his tower, so uh, should be able to kind of kind of just like spell cycle him hopefully he does have eq himself though so not gonna be easy and he will go with the queen there uh just gonna mortar here and okay i actually don't think i actually needed that mortar i was kind of expecting the queen to survive with uh one more hp than it did but didn't end up actually surviving mm -hmm. all right so he will go with the eq there and could be interesting here i'm just gonna go with my own eq and Okay, he's going to split Royal Hogs, so we could probably activate King Tower here. It is going to be a little bit better for us if he goes, like, same lane with his Royal Hogs, so we can just, like, fully counter with, like, a Valkyrie plus Log, but he probably will make the smarter play of trying to go in a split lane um, battle, which is going to be a little bit more difficult for us. We don't really have any way to kill, like, two lanes of Royal Hogs, any good way at least. We do have Mortar, but he can probably kind of, kind of just, like, earthquake it pretty easily and then just like break through so could be interesting right here but the king tower should help a little bit and by the way guys i just have like a random question for you guys i don't know why but i just feel like asking what is what was the scariest thing that happened to you in your life like i don't really know like too many little things about you guys it has been like a little bit since i've been since i uploaded I feel like, I mean, it's, it hasn't been too long, only like a couple days, but it still feels like forever to me. I don't know why, but yeah, I just want to ask you guys that. You can comment down below what your scariest experience was. For me, I'm not really sure. I didn't really have like too many scary experiences in my life. I mean, not like nothing like crazy at least, but um, I remember one time like me, me and a bunch of friends like went on a night hike, like probably at maybe like 8.30 p.m. or something, and you might not think that's too late, but where we lived, it was already super dark by then, and you couldn't see, like, pretty much anything, and then we just, we just went to the park next to us, and we went on, like, the trail there, and we just, like, saw this really weird thing, so basically we were just, like, running running around the park, and then we kind of went on the trail area, and we were just, like, walking there, and then, well, then we had, like, a group of maybe, like, eight friends or something, and then, like, half of the friends ran ahead of the other friends, and we kind of wanted to scare the the rest of the the rest of the people that were behind us so we i mean like the rest of the friends is what i meant to say and um 
yeah, so basically it'd be like hidden in a, in a little, I don't know what you would really call it, but there was like a little entryway that was kind of connected to the main trail. So we just went in there, then right as our friends came out, we just came out of the place and we just screamed really loud and they got super scared. And then as we, as we walk, walked along, we like saw someone in front of us, but uh, we just thought it was one of our friends actually, because he looked almost the same as one of the friends who came there, but then a few seconds later like he was just like standing still and we realized that it wasn't our friend so we were just like wondering what was happening like everyone was kind of just like standing back and looking at him but mm, apparently it was like some random random guy we didn't know and then he just came up to us and he said we scared him super badly and he cursed a little bit but just say that and uh yeah it was quite quite interesting like he was very drunk as well i think and uh, yeah, we were basically just talking to him for like 10 minutes and then he said like some really, really weird stuff like Nothing like too bad, but like he just the way he was talking just seemed like so strange like something was I don't know something was up with him. I'm not really sure Sure what happened exactly, but yeah, that was what I Experienced and I mean it doesn't sound that scary the way I'm telling it, but pretty much all of my friends were just like They were acting calm, but they were like screaming inside so um, yeah. Okay, it looks like this guy's actually gonna miss an EQ there, so that might actually be the the opportunity we needed to win here. And uh, EQ log should finish him off, so that will be GG. Alright, hopping in the next match here, we're gonna be up against Jack. So, Jack is a super good 2.6 player. I'm not sure if all of you guys know him or not, but he was one of the one of the all-time great players of Clash Royale, especially on live, at least. Alright, and looks like he will be running Hog here. Not really sure what variant of Hog he's going to be using. Okay, he will have EQ here as well, so this could be a little bit harder than if he had the normal 2.6 version, but we'll see what we can do here. At least he did waste the EQ, so now he won't have it for our Mortar. And he will have Cannon here, so he might be running like the um, 2.5 Hoggy Q deck with like Musketeer and stuff. We'll have to see here what the rest of his cars are. But as you can see, Mortar's quite strong. Like even though he does have EQ in his deck, our Mortar still did get a shot on his tower there. All right, so may have to be a bit more of a spell cycle game here. I kind of just went with the Mortar there because he wasted the EQ early, but in general we might have to save save our Mortars just for defense mostly. And the thing about Mortar is that's actually pretty good against Hog Rider on defense. Like when you have a mortar up, even if they go with a hog and an earthquake, it's still gonna fully defend a hog rider if you have your king tower activated. So it should be pretty good on defense. And we do have NATO as well to counter his hog rider, but the thing is he will slowly, slowly but surely chip down our king tower if we keep on NATOing the hog towards it. So um, we do have to be a little bit careful there. And I did let his fire spirit connect there. I probably could have defended it, but not really sure if I that was would have been the best play. So just gonna go with a mortar here. He will queen, but one more mortar shot plus a log will finish it off. So, kind of not the best queen by him. A little bit wasted, I feel like. And okay, looks like mortar will actually get a shot right there. So we're in a pretty good lead right now. Probably can just like defend an EQ cycle at this point because um, it would have been harder to EQ cycle earlier. But since we're ahead quite a bit, we should be fine here because he does have a bit of a faster cycle than us. So he can probably cycle more EQs than we can. But we're looking pretty good right now by the way guys um i know i did stumble a lot with my words in the last game kind of feels weird to record again after so long like i know it, i know it hasn't been that long as i said but i don't know it feels so strange but i'm ready to get back onto that content grind now um yeah just got like a bit busy with school and whatnot but i'll probably be still uploading pretty frequently except maybe like right before i graduate i might be a little bit more busy with stuff Alright, so he is going to go with the Hog again, just going to go with the High Tornado here, don't really want to take more King Tower damage. Okay, unfortunately the Hog did actually get a hit there, I kind of forgot like like how the NATO works against Hog now, like ever since the rework NATO got a super long time ago, I was thinking that would fully counter the Hog, but did get one shot here, but still looking quite good. Uh, just going to go with the Defensive Mortar as well. We do have to be pretty careful of our King Tower because he is always EQing our King Tower, so a little bit dangerous here. And his knight was tanking a bit for the Hog Rider there, so we did have to go with the log as well, but should be fine, I think. Um, yeah, as you can see, like this deck is pretty good against these 
these meta decks. Like, I feel like Hoggy Q is actually one of the strongest decks in the meta right now. Um, I did super well with it last season as well. I'm pretty sure I played... I'm pretty sure I played, like, pretty much this exact version as Jack is playing. I wasn't really paying attention to Jack's deck, but I think he has, like, the same version I was playing last season, except he does have Knight over Valkyrie, I think, which is... Honestly, it's, like, okay to run Valkyrie overnight, but I feel like you should... I mean, Knight over Valkyrie, but I feel like you guys should probably mostly be running Valkyrie. Just, like, I feel like just in general, Valkyrie is better, and that will be GG right here. Okay, thank you guys for watching, and see you in the next one. Bye!